Yeah, so you're going to come here on the 19th of October to speak at Jitex Future Stars, and uh, then you're going to yeah. come and play at the Capital Club live in person. I'm excited to do that. I mean, I wish I could. I'll be, I'm getting these drums ready to pack up and bring with me. I wasn't planning to start off with Charlie Watts, but it's been a yeah. sad day in rock and roll today, and I know you were close friends with him. Yeah, yesterday I was doing a movie soundtrack, um, and all of a sudden – the producer came and said, uh, you know, uh, Charlie Watts, someone just texted me and said, Charlie Watts has passed away. Now, I knew he wasn't f doing well because they said he wasn't doing well and that they were going to have a replacement for the Stones tour for one month and then Charlie would come back. And then obviously his health uh, was worse than we realized. Uh, but I can't remember what year. I would say it was in the early 2000 whenever bridges of babylon was done by the rolling stones i was invited to come by the studio and it was like at midnight i'd been re rehearsing with john fogarty from 12 to 6 in the afternoon and then i did a recording session with bruce springsteen's keyboard player from uh 7 to 11 then i went to the studio i mean i was tired but how do you turn down you know hanging with the stones so i get in there and uh this great session drummer, Jim Keldner, introduced me to Charlie and said Charlie was working on his solo record in the, another studio in the back of the big studio, another room. And and Jim said, you should have Kenny play percussion on some of your uh, tracks because he does really strange, unique stuff. So Charlie said, sure. So I was playing like steel buckets and weird. I was sitting on the floor playing this weird stuff and Charlie loved it. So he asked me to come back the next day and he asked me to come back the, or the next night. And, um, and then one day I walk in and there's all the stones, you know, Keith Richards, Ron Wood, Mick Jagger. So we're setting up uh, to do a, a song and, um, and I'm playing a gourd, uh, like a, a gourd with beads on it with a brush. So it was like, Gotcha. with uh, either Mick was playing acoustic guitar or Keith. But either way, Mick came up to me and said, hey, Kenny, you know, I like what you're doing, but don't get in the way of Charlie Watts's hi-hat. And the point of the whole story is that the lead singer, one of the greatest singers and one of the biggest bands ever, revered his drummer. He realized that Charlie had, had a, such a big sound or had a huge contribution to the sound of the stones he didn't want me to get in the way of that and it, uh, it's not that typical that a lead singer would defend his drummer like that and i was so blown away and impressed and sure enough when the record came out my gourd wasn't on it i've got to say kenny we've got to save some of the stories for when you come to dubai but if there's anyone i would have liked to have changed lives with it's you and i don't i don't think i'd say that about anyone i mean having been up close and worked with yeah. And all the greats from the 1970s onwards. It's just amazing. Uh, it's, I really look forward to meeting you in person. And uh, it's been a pleasure getting to know you. And, and uh, remind everyone again, Kenny at the Jitex Future Stars, October 19th, and live at the Capital Club Dubai, October the 19th as well. Thank you very much, Kenny. Well, You're welcome. You Thanks for having me. Everybody have a good night, and I'll see you soon.